Sorry. Hello. If you can hear me, clap once. <laughs> if you can't hear me, clap twice. Wrong one. There you go. Sure. Erin's going to be my clicker today, <laughs> so I'll point at her if I need a slide change. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Everyone's good? Everyone? Every single person? 100%? All good? Is that what you're saying? Oh. <laughs> so this is my experience in my emotional journey. I'm not really concerned if you agree with it or not. Not to be rude, but basically, you shouldn't care about my emotional journey. I don't care about yours. Everyone has their own emotional journey that they go through. If I start putting what I think about your emotional journey, then it's on your journey, all right? So I want to just start off on a good positive foot. <laughs> <laughs> so I, have a solar power, I used to have a solar power company aimed at providing solar energy for the poor, uh, based in Indonesia where I grew up. Um, I did it for three years. Basically, I provided 4,000 uh, solar power systems in 4,000 homes affecting uh, 12,000 or 15,000 people, helping their life. Um, yeah, I did this for three years. The first year and a half was great, but it turned into a bit of a different story. I wasn't happy anymore. And I was on Forbes magazine, I was on Channel News Asia, I was on every major media outlet, and uh, at the end of last year, I actually got um, mentioned as one of the top 10 uh, social entrepreneurs in Indonesia. But I felt lousy. How in the world did I reach my goal but feel completely empty? I know that's what you're asking, and I'll tell you how. But first, yeah, go ahead. So here's a photo of me pretending I knew a shit about my company. <laughs> and uh, but on top of the you know, triangle is um, the corporation, the fat assholes with all the money. And on the far left is represents the poor, underdeveloped rural communities. What I used to do is I used to pitch my idea to companies and use their CSR budget to install as many solar home systems as possible. Very simple concept. But what I found out over a year is that, I don't know, maybe I wasn't getting the respect that I wanted from the companies. After all, I was an Indonesian. I was an Indian citizen in Indonesia helping their country, and they weren't respecting me. So I felt really, really down. And not only that, the poor, the poor communities were complaining. So I was, you know, getting uh, getting fucked from the corporate side and getting fucked from the rural development side. It was a real love triangle, I'm telling you. I was getting fucked all over the place. <laughs> so I want to use one uh, company as an example. Anyone else with that one? Great. Look at that stupid logo. A kid staring at the stars because all their employees go to work and stare at the fucking window all day. That's why. So this is one of the examples. This happens all the time. We had seven months of negotiations back and forth, and I had to go up and I try my best to get their attention. You know, three canceled meetings in the space of about seven and a half months. They changed their address while I was going to their final meeting. <laughs> and two incapable employees during the meeting. This shit is like a Christmas carol. Seven months of negotiations, three canceled meetings, one canceled address, two incapable employees. It was it's funny now. <laughs> and during the meeting, what happened is that after the meeting, you know what they say? We're, actually, our CSL program wants to focus on water. <laughs> after all this shit, what I'm talking now. So this is one of the examples. I felt, I mean, this was just one company. This was happening all the time. I just felt that I wasn't getting respect. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't expect respect, but I just felt that, you know, you guys are the big shots. I'm a small little guy working on my own. The least you can do is answer your fucking emails. It's just common decency. But this is just one side. The next side is helping the poor. They were complaining. They were complaining and complaining and complaining about their products. Why wasn't it bigger? Can I get one for my mother in another village? These are the kind of issues that they would take. So helping the poor wasn't as great as I thought it was. The first year was wonderful. You know, all the photos of Red Cross, feeding kids. It's, it's, it's not bullshit, but it's not great. It's not just a rainbows and butterflies. So I was honestly getting completely... That's me, sorry. Screwed <laughs> by, <laughs> by the technicians. <laughs> it's all right. Shall I go? 
I was I was actually making I'm fucking up on fuck up night. I actually was making it making it work on the behind screen there. Oh really? Shall I just take over? You want to sit down? Uh, I can use that slide. It's fine. Okay, for now. All right. All right. <clears throat> So basically, if, I don't know if many people feel this way, but it's pretty much a charade. I was doing one and a half years of trying my best to make the company look good, but I was feeling like shit. Uh, maybe it's the idea of social media that you have to make everything look amazing. Maybe it was the fact that my, you know, at the end of the day, my parents, you know, they don't want to see me give up. So I was doing all sorts of crap, taking all sorts of photos, putting Instagram, Facebook, but at the end of the day, I was feeling like absolute shit. And when I got that last award, I said, you know, put my fingers up and said, fuck this, I'm out, seriously. Because it was just the end of my road. And I was working way too hard at getting mentions and being on top lists of something, and I felt bad. So there's no way that I wanted to continue this kind of charade. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I definitely felt it. This wasn't like a six month feeling, this is like one and a half years of just pretending that everything is great, but actually feeling crap. I was doing okay work, but I wasn't working for myself anymore. You know, I don't know who I was working for, but it just definitely wasn't happy. And um, so here are some of the awards and features. I was working for getting awards. I was working for getting mentioned in some place. And everyone, every time I put up a, a post on Facebook, they would have likes and everyone said, keep going, yeah, you keep going, you do this, you do that, you're doing great work. I'm like, yeah, thanks. They're not helping. <laughs> you want to do so you go take a solar panel and travel six hours to some freaking house. You do it. So everyone just loves what you do, but you're kind of doing it on your own. You're not getting the support needed. So I was working way too hard to get mentioned. But I did learn a few lessons. Uh, the lessons I learned was basic appreciation for people who are doing it on their own. I have a tremendous amount of appreciation for people who are doing their own startups, especially social, social enterprises. I offer a lot of uh, free consulting. Um, no one's really taken that on yet, but I offer it. Um, I try my best to cut the bullshit. Once, I'm so happy when a company writes me back and says no. Why? Because at least they gave me the respect to say no. I hate it when they just leave me hanging. So I love it when people cut the bullshit. I'm really happy when you give me negative information because negative information is better than no information at all. And the last thing I learned is my um, the confidence is so important. You can be dumb, stupid, and broke. But if you have confidence, you will do it. I used to be dumb, stupid, and broke when I first started the company, but I have confidence. So from now on, I make sure that my confidence is in check. I don't do anything that's going to harm my confidence. Because I know once the confidence goes, everything's going to fall apart. So those are the three lessons that I've learned from uh, my social enterprise and my work. So thanks a lot.